It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Atlanta Falcons. And it's coming up next. First opened in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Today, we've got a solid matchup in store in the NFC, as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Brandon Gunn joined in the booth by Charles Davis at CD. These Falcons seem to be in an interesting spot coming into 2023. They've seemingly got playmakers galore on offense, but they may only be as good as what their defense can do for them. And that defense, 27th overall in the league last year, so they must improve. In order to help them, though, they're going to try and control the ball more on the offensive side, try and run it a little bit more and take some time off the clock. Meanwhile, for the visiting Vikings, we know all about the skilled players on offense, but they're looking to make up some ground on the defensive side of the ball this season as they were second from the bottom in total defense a year ago. What they want to do is find a way to be more consistent on that side of the ball and not rely on making big plays late in games in order to secure victories. They want to be able to stop people earlier. That's what they're looking to do in 2023. The veteran punter Bradley Pinion has this one teed up, and we are underway from Atlanta. Kene Duangu now out of his end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They're led out by the rookie, picked 164th in this past draft out of BYU, Jaron Hall. We're seeing it more and more in this league, how teams love to have athletes back there taking the snaps, guys who can throw it and move around and get yards with their legs if needed. He's one of the best examples that we see out there right now. He can throw for hundreds of yards one week and then run for 100 plus the next. He adds an extra dimension that really confounds defenses when he puts it all together. They'll start on the ground with Madison. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. It may be only a gain of three yards, but that back, he deserves a lot more credit on the play. That could have easily been stopped at the line, but his vision and his determination found some space to turn it into that modest gain. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Now it's Hall. That's caught by the big tight end, TJ Hawkinson. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. So, Charles, you know, take nothing away from this young man under center because I know people think he's got a very bright future in this league, but I have to figure the defensive coordinators love the thought of squaring off against a rookie quarterback. And especially if they have guys they can put together a game plan with that's going to confuse, disguise a lot of coverage, make this kid think a little bit. Because in college, he's seen a lot of things. Let's, let's not get it wrong here. But at the same time, in the NFL, you can do so much more because of the athletes you have, because of their football IQ. And don't forget, you're going to throw a couple extra rushers at him as well. See if he can handle the pressure when those guys come at him. Here's Madison getting it again on second. There he goes, left side. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. Oh, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. Oh, this one that may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. Here's Hall, and that's complete to K.J. Osborne. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll bring us to a third and four. Defense! 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 Defense!
taken in by his big tight end. Touchdown, TJ Hawkinson. A 24-yard touchdown. And the Vikings will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. And what a weapon he is at the tight end spot because when they throw him the football downfield, they count on him getting additional yardage almost every time. And that's exactly what he did there. Caught that, ran with it, all the way to the end zone. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it was T.J. Hawkinson who finished the drive with a touchdown reception. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. The Falcons offense set to take over for the first time. And it's all behind their 30-year-old quarterback. That's Taylor Heineke. Let's face it, you don't see too many old Dominion alums suiting up under center in the NFL. And in fact, Taylor Heineke, the first ODU quarterback to suit up for a regular season game, not to mention doing well in the playoffs. This guy's an absolute fighter. Fought for every chance he's had in this league. Attitude, determination, those carry over to his teammates very well. Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 24. Here's the eighth overall pick from Texas. It's B. John Robinson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. A perfect example right there, Charles, of why they love this rookie runner. And think about how the NFL and the college games are meshing together more and more. You don't have to go to the NFL and learn a new set of skills. What you did in college often makes you ready for the NFL. Back to Robinson now on first down. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. And they get 17 more on that one and another first down. Absolutely no trouble moving the ball on the ground on the first two plays from scrimmage. Absolutely. You know what I really like? Same guy carrying the ball in both plays. And what drives me crazy is when a back has a nice run, he taps his helmet to go out of the game. I would want the ball again and again and again because you've established really nice momentum and now you're seeing the field really well. To the 36 yard line, stop there. I feel like I can see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. They'll work from the 36 on second and six. And they'll try to throw now, Heineke. That's Cordero Patterson hauling it in. Seven yards there and a first down. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. On oh, first and 10, it's Robinson. Room here to run. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. 50 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things. Touchdown, Falcons! Van Jefferson from 19 yards away. And the Falcons respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. Koo able to connect on the extra point, and we are tied at seven.
Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. He's got a man complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. It's a gain of 34. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Here's Madison running left. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second down and two. Here's Hall. Forced out to his left. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. I haven't met a quarterback yet that didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder if he wasn't a first-round pick. They want to show the league that they made a big mistake. Determined to get the first down there, no hesitation at all to tuck it and go. I bet he would have tried running through their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker. Now a throw here, hold in. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Throwing here is Hall. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. He saw the pressure and he got out, but he never got upfield. And the defense, they took full advantage of a rookie mistake there. They were able to add a big loss on the sack. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner he got it they're going to mark this at the four yard line so for the second time in this one we get set to see the falcons offense and they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five but we have seen teams be bold here and take shots right sometimes you go max protection make it a one receiver route and take your shot downfield and see what happens and occasionally we've seen success occur now a handoff to start it out, Robinson. And he takes this just about a yard shy of the 20. 
66 yards rushing for him now. He's carried the ball just five times. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. Again, it's Robinson. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit, and that's what he did on that play. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Heineke to throw it. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Makai Blackman's got it. And they will finally run him down, but not until he brings this one all the way back down inside the 10-yard line. Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner, and with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day-two pick, and a lot of people thought he had first-round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You called that pick in early, and he shows why he was so coveted with that interception there. Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. Now Hall. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Partner, this is almost an unwinnable spot for a defense. They have to come right out for a first and goal trying to stop them. But let me hold on a second. Let me take that back real quick. They can win here if they force a field goal try. Still a long ways away from that happening, but that has to be what they're thinking right now. On second down, this is Madison. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit. And he gets a small gain on the play. Now Greg Joseph for the field goal try. This is an easy one, 23-yarder. Joseph's got it, and they take the lead here now at 10-7. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say we should have done better there. Joseph now to kick this one away. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Been a little bit of an interesting start. The first drive for him, Charles, they had the passing touchdown. The second drive, he threw the interception. So we'll see what this third drive of the ball game brings. Yeah, it's kind of a tiebreaker, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that's the tough part for them and for him because, yeah, things went really well in that first one, not so well on the second one. He wants to get back to what he did to get this game going. 
And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. This is second and eight. As they've got it as we resume action. On second down, another shot for Robinson. 74 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Now they need two. Here's third down. Robinson will try to pick it up. And this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Now a man who did his collegiate punting just a couple hours from here in Clemson in South Carolina, Bradley Pinion to kick. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. Fair catch signal for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And it will be Vikings ball first and 10. throw it over the middle and complete to Addison and give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34 and from the 34 here's second and four they'll go Madison up the middle and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. Solid run up the middle. What made it successful? Well, what you have to do is control the nose guard, but sometimes you don't do it by blocking him. You do it by influencing him. Get him moving to one side or the other and hit him back on the opposite. Back to throw, Hall. Throw right side here, going to be incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people who can make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Here's second and ten. Looking to throw. Hulk, nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Falcon, the big fella. And this is going to be brought back. It's a scoop and score for the Falcon TD. Huge, huge play by the defense. Not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block? and bring it all the way home. I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well usually. <laughs> Coup now for the point after. And that makes it 14-10. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So 
here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 64 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. Back to the ground on first down. Here's Madison. And some good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. Couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs, and how about that second one? What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're gonna start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. They go play action here on first down. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. To throw again on second down. Hall, open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. That'll go for a gain of seven. And now that sets up third and two. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Off play action. Hall. Oh. Solid coverage. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. B. John Robinson leading the offense out for another drive. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Heineke now looking to throw on first down. And that is incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 17 yards and a first down for Atlanta. And this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And they go play action. Now Heineke. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Second and a couple. 
They'll run with a former Viking, Cordero Patterson. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. That what a first down pickup of eight. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Robinson, he'll try the left side. A nice little juke and great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for a first down for the Falcons. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage, and we're still in the second quarter. Robinson with another carry. And a solid run down inside the 30. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Three yards to go on second down, and they've got three tight ends out there. Jumbo set. On play action, Heineke. This pass is caught by London. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. First catch here for London, and also a first down. And this is where play action can be so effective. Your running game's been the driving force on this possession. So as a defense, you start shifting your focus towards stopping the run. But if an offensive coordinator sees that, he can take advantage and they get good yardage there. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Heineke now. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Now Heineke. And this time he's got the hookup, it's complete. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Fourth down, and the attention turns to Falcon kicker Young Way Koo. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Vikings, they come up big down near the goal line. Alexander Madison leading this Vikings offense out there to begin the next drive. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen and put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complimentary football and get that passing game going as well. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? To throw it is Hall. Off the play fake. Short throw caught by the tight end, Oliver. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Well, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. 
He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn upfield and gain any yardage. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Well, they came up with points in their first two possessions, but it looks like they'll come up empty here on their third drive. The defense finally starting to get locked into them a little bit. Might have to go a little bit deeper into their playbook on their next possession. And here's Ryan right now, standing just outside his own goal line. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Bijan Robinson and the Falcons back onto the field. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Keep well, everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? They don't need to run another play here before the two minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. To throw is Heineke. And he'll slide to a halt here, still a little shy of the first down marker. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Heineke now from the 50. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. So no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Throwing, Heineke. And he'll complete this one to Patterson. Now the Falcons gonna use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. And they'll throw again, Heineke. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And they will have a first down as they are definitely in field goal range now, down at the 20-yard line. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers, and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. A first down throw for Heineke. Throw out wide is incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Again, it's Heineke. Got London on a slam. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Heineke. Just before. 
before halftime. And this drive, Charles, very well timed as they score with very little time remaining in this first half. And I'm reminded that they get the second half kickoff as well, so they can break this one wide open before the other guys have a chance to possess the football. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it was the tight end Kyle Pitts finishing it all off on the touchdown reception. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And with eight seconds on the clock, really not a lot of time to try to put anything together. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a strong first half for the veteran quarterback, Taylor Heineke. His two touchdown passes helped pave the way for his guys to take this lead into the intermission. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. back to receive they've got the lead and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway and he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line so we get set to start this third quarter here's the Falcons offense now but Charles for them pretty good first half on the ground they had some success running the ball in quarters one and two and they've got the lead now a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter yeah believe it or not you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first run second so for me it is really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense and it's working pretty well for them now and let's face it they can continue to do damage with it and in addition it sets up the pass game really well for them too and they'll get him down after a pickup of eight second and two well if you do read man coverage brandon the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it from the 34 yard line here's second and a couple A give left side to Robinson. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. What I continually hear from running backs and offensive linemen is how often they're actually getting together to watch film so they can get in sync with each other, understand blocking patterns better, how running back likes to cut, what he wants to do. And boy, it all came together on that one. That's one where they watch it and say, hey, we, we did everything we were supposed to do right there. That looked like the play we drew up Absolutely. and designed. And then we got to see it unfold in real time. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. Touchdown, Falcons! B. John Robinson, 35 yards. And his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Well, he was 
He's already over 100 yards running the football prior to this play, but this run may be his best yet. I've got to agree with you on that one. We're looking at a guy running with extreme confidence, running in harmony and sync with his blockers. All of them kind of moving as one. And look at the end result. Big plays. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. So that drive with four plays. And it was Bijan Robinson who took it home with a touchdown run. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. In motion right is Osborne. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the jet sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house. So they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. Second down and eight. Now it's Hall. Catch is made by Harry. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Here's Hall. They'll get this underneath to Madison, and this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying... That's into a crowd and intercepted. And the Falcons are going to get the football here as he gets this up to the 38-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at their 38. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Out of the gun, they give to Robinson. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, 
can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game Heineke now on second down looking middle and it's incomplete and he still doesn't have a catch we're into the second half I think it's a little bit of a surprise to me but that was one he should have caught absolutely that was his best opportunity right there he dropped it if they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Looking to throw, Heineke. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. The linebacker, Jordan Hicks, flying in there for the sack. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And now out comes Minnesota. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And that to the sideline and incomplete. Boy, they're going to say there's a receiver in the area. That was close to grounding, but it's second down. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Now Hall. He'll find Osborne here. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And you start to think, if it's going to happen for these guys, it's got to start with this drive. Down three scores, they need to start making some inroads. And that'll help the cause there as they pick up good yardage and a first down. Here's Madison running on first down. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Back to throw, Hall. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Just what they need, a lecture from me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Hall. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. Running from the shotgun with Madison. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Big Calais Campbell fighting through to make the play in the backfield. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. This goes out wide from Madison. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate... And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the 
sack. Down he goes. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. I know nowadays they give a lot of guys different things when they get to the sidelines after creating a big play, but just throw a cape on this guy because he single-handedly ended multiple drives. Interception earlier, sack on third down. Really should have a better game plan installed for how to contain him because he's affecting this game in so many ways. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Falcons will get it first and 10 from deep in their own territory. Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 13. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Buried by multiple defenders on the drive's first play. Oh boy, he got a favorable spot there. The guys on the sidelines will raise their hands over their head and clasping their hands to signal safety. But the official marked it just outside the end zone at the one yard line. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Robinson up the middle. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. A nice pick up there, 19 yards. And they're set up better for third. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for them. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. Now a throw left sideline here is complete. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline, but what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. Heineke now looking to throw on first down. His throw incomplete. Now the secondary's really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away. Turns into a nice play. Atlanta, Georgia is the spot, and glad to have you along for the ride. Third quarter action, second and ten. Heineke to throw it. He's got his man, London, right side. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Heineke now. That is caught. And he's going to have a Falcons first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short. Blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. On first and ten, it's Robinson to the 43, second down. They're pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Here's second and seven. Heineke. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gained from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Now Heineke. And this almost intercepted. 
Not sure he saw the free safety that time. But lucky, incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. And that could have been the lifeline they needed. This is a play that could have been made. Instead, it's just going to fall incomplete. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. here is Hall and his throw is incomplete we know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught second and ten Hall to throw it Open man is Osborne, and he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. give to Madison and just no chance of turning the corner he can only get back to the line of scrimmage second and ten coming up absolutely love the effort there the ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage nice linebacker play now is second and ten here's Hall Incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. Just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. On third down, they run with Madison, and he is going to lose yardage here. They lost two, and it brings up four. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. And here's Ryan right now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be Falcon football. Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. On second down, here's Heineke again. And that falls to the ground incomplete. Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now Heineke. This one up to about the 35. And that 
is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run this one right with Robinson. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Byron Murphy there on the tackle. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. On third down, Robinson. And the tackle gonna be made at the 41 as they stop him a few yards short of the first. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for Atlanta. Oh, the return is Powell. And out now come the Vikings. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. It's Hall. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Hall. Pressure brought in. Get there for the sack. That's the NFL vet Calais Campbell coming in and dragging him down. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He okay. needs better protection, that's for sure. And this offense on third down today, they've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and a mile. Operating from the gun, Hall. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. Arnold Ebikady able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. So from their own end zone here, this kicks away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And the Falcons are set up well to begin their drive as it'll begin in enemy territory already. give here's Robinson and good work there in open space and he's got this all the way down now to the 32 
It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Atlanta. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Two yards the loss, second and 12. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. So the completion results there in nine yards, and now it's third and three. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you've got a heck of a tight end candidate. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start and then a nice tackle to finish things off. And we'll see Young Way Koo now for the Falcons. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. Koo knocks this one through the post. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so that you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Throwing again, Hall. This one caught by Osborne, right side. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. Draw play, Madison. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. It's a six-yard gain, and it leaves him looking at a fourth down. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved him and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. So no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. 
Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. To throw again, Hall. Trying to lob it in there, but it's incomplete. Now the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's gotta be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm gonna give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Back to throw again. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Bud Dupree off the edge and getting to the quarterback. So if we recount real quick, he had the touchdown earlier, and now he comes up with the sack here. No doubt about it, he's having himself a game. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to pick up the Vikings first down on what will be a big play there on fourth and long. Well, give them credit. They're going to stay and fight this out to the end. Fourth down, you've got to go for it. And they not only convert, but pick up some good yardage as well. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now Hall. Finding Hawkinson here on the out route. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that will bring up second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Hall. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. I'll tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice, long, soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. And once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. The Vikings on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This will be third and five. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. Another good completion on the drive as the Vikings have a first down. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Slot man moves right. Now a fake on the jet sweep and off the play action. He'll look to throw it. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Back to throw, Hall. And he's going to be taken down, back around the 35-yard line. Multiple rushers break through to drop him for the seventh time this game. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Here's Hall throwing on fourth down. Making the catch. This is the tight end, Oliver. 
And he is going to pick up the Vikings first down. And that was something else. A big pickup on fourth and long to give him a new set of downs. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now. And I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout. And all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. Oh, uh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now, and if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game. Face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense, and they've done so with ease. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So the completion good for seven there. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. There's a completion to the tight end. And I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. So the pass incomplete in the end zone, but the flag comes out for interference. And now you're set up right on the doorstep of the goal line. One yard away changes what your play calls are going to be. Back to throw. Hall. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. K.J. Osborne from a yard out. And the Vikings have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game, they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And a good job here by the Falcons. Their hands team able to recover it. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The Falcons ready to take over. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. Heineke to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down.
Game in hand, the offense takes the knee. Second and 11 now. Hand off now to Robinson. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because We've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. How about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. 